Hey guys, Perplex QT here. Welcome to my channel. So for those of you that are new, welcome. I know I've gotten a lot of subs over the last two days, so I definitely want to welcome you guys. So I do have some updates, breaking news updates actually, and I want to thank Aaron and another family member for these updates. So let me start by saying, if you're not familiar with the case that I've been following very, very closely, is happened about 24 minutes from my house, and that is in Elkmont, Alabama, where a 14-year-old boy annihilated his entire family. Each member died with one gunshot wound to the head. 14-year-old's got pretty good mark, marksmanship. So the burning question has been why? And up until tonight, I did get the answer. But first, let me go back to the background. So on Labor Day, and this happened on Labor Day, at around 10.30 p.m., this 14-year-old called Elkwood police and said, my whole family's been murdered. Two died, th I'm sorry, three died on the spot. Two were taken to the hospital. The two later died at the hospital. The two that were taken to the hospital, which was also never released by the police, but I did learn, is the father and the son. Not the baby, but the son. So the mother the girl and the baby all died on site. The other two, as I said, died on the way to the hospital or died at the hospital. The reason why they didn't survive is because Mason, Mason Sisk is the name of the 14 year old. He decided not to call 911. Instead, as we learned yesterday, he decided to drive around which there is camera of him driving around town. This is 14 year old. And he called his girlfriend, which I've yet to find the name of. Nobody seems to know that this girlfriend even exists. So even family members, because some of them live out of state, they don't know who the girlfriend was either. So hopefully I will find that information shortly. We also know that there's been a lot of speculation of why he did this. So what I learned tonight from Aaron, who's, he said I can use his name, as well as one of the family members in Indianapolis also told me that medication was the number one reason why he did this. Now, what they're not sure of is which medication caused his psych, you know, temporary psychosis. They don't know which medication or why he wasn't on the medication at the time, but this is 100% medication related. And it's so sad too that it is medication and it's doctor prescribed medication that it could mess with a 14 year old's head so bad that he wants to kill his whole family. So it will be interesting to find out what medication it was. So let me also say that yesterday, because I want to clear something up for new people, even old people. Yesterday I wrote on a live that I was heading to the funeral. I only wrote funeral because that's just the way I talk. I mean, that's my personality. Okay, I'm going to a funeral. But the funeral itself started at 12, and the actual services were open to anybody who wanted to go. But the actual burial was only for family members. Now, my son, my little one, had a football game between 11 o'clock and 2.30. It was supposed to be to 1.30 but it ended up running an hour late. And thanks to my wonderful subs who wanted to follow me in the car and ride around with me around my hometown and not my hometown, but where I live and Alabama as a whole and, you know, take the routes of how to get to the church and everywhere. So this is marked on video that I left the church somewhere around 1030, 1045. Went to get some Starbucks and then went to my son's football game. I think I landed there around 12. 12, yeah, around a quarter to 12, 12. So when services started, I was there already. I was at the football game. And what I did do, though, is I went to the open services that started at 9. I stayed about an hour. What I thought, I had reported that there were five caskets. What I was told, that was wrong. There were only four caskets. The mom was buried with the baby. So... Because I'm not family and I didn't feel comfortable going up to 
hug them when I didn't know them. I kind of just, you know, waited in line a minute and then I sat down and do what I do best and that's kind of people watch. A couple things that I noticed and I did see two different pictures that I really wanted to come out right because then I was going to frame them and send them to the family members that, you know, that I took the pictures of. One of them was a beautiful picture, like breathtaking, of one of the bikers holding the grandmother. And for some reason, they both moved at the exact time I had my camera out. And I wasn't recording inside the church. I had stopped the recording inside the church because it just didn't feel right. Then I took a picture of four family members. They were all in black. And there was something about them, maybe because they were all blonde and it was one guy, guy and three girls. And maybe it was just something about them that it just looked like it would be a beautiful picture. That didn't come out because one of them moved and then it got blurry and, you know, you can't take that moment again. So those are the pictures that I was deferring to on my video. And like I said, I know there seems to be misconfusion about what I was doing there. And, you know, I see a lot of rumors going around. There was an, again, there was an open service from 9 to 11.45. Then the actual service was at 12. I was long gone. So for anyone that may have mistaken that, I just wanted to clear that up. And I was told, I don't know if I said this already, but I was told from family members and from Aaron that I will get updates faster than CNN or anyone else because they're not reporting the real things. And the family members are going through so much right now, losing everybody, that it's so frustrating that the news just keeps, you know, putting a spin on it and twisting it that nobody wants to even talk to them anymore. And I, honestly, if it was me, I couldn't blame them. I really don't blame them. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. I just want to give you a quick update. Like I said, I will keep updating you as, as fast as I can, you know, as fast as it all comes in. And that's it. So if I get an update later, I'm waiting for pictures of Mason, which I was told they don't mind me releasing, but just wait a couple of days and see what happens. So I said, okay. And that's all. So I will see you guys later. And again, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm also, I want to promote my two other channels. I also have True Crime Network, which has kind of been slow lately. I haven't really done much on it because I'm focusing this case on here. Plus Perplex Talk Radio, which tomorrow I'm going to be on live around 1.30. And we can go ahead and talk about the case and, you know, other cases. So that's all I have for you guys. Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to join Patreon, and I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Peace.